What is up YouTube, that's here, bringing you guys another VGC 2015 replay. This is actually going to be a game I played against a fellow streamer, Pokemon VGC Center. I'll leave a link to his channel and Twitter in the description. Super good guy, he's actually going to be playing Chalk for this game, so he was trying to just play Standard. Had a little bit of a battle viewer battle stream going on, so I decided to partake. I'm leading off with Sableye, Aegislash, you guys have seen me do this a couple times before. It is one of my favorite leads against Chalk. Pairing it off with Cresselia and Kangaskhan, leading off against Landorus, Thunderous, Kangaskhan, and Heatran. So without further ado, we're just going to hop in there, get right into it, and show why this is such a great lead against Chalk. It, is, it has a good matchup against Double Genies, it has a great matchup against Kang, its only bad matchup is really Heatran, and if I play things correctly, it turns into a great matchup as we're going to showcase in this game. So we see Double Shiny Genie from my opponent has that Intimidate, and also the, remember the Prankster from the Thunderous is going to be able to potentially lock down both my Pokemon, but we are going to see him hard switch straight off into that Heatran, trying to uh, switch it on a potential Will-O-Wisp, which is uh, stabilized bread and butter. Unfortunately for him, we are going to switch it up and go for a Faka on the Thunderous slot, not wanting to eat any status moves this first turn of the game. Also, we're going for a Shadow Ball on what was the Landorus slot. One of my plans was to potentially eat an Earthquake, and uh, since I burned, I well, my, my plan was to eat an Earthquake, Weakness Policy one-shot the Landorus. Not going to work out that way, but we did manage to get free damage that turn. So, starting off turn 3, we're going to go for that King Shield, and we're going to see a Thunder Wave onto my Sableye slot from the Thunderous, so I'm thinking maybe he doesn't have Taunt, maybe he has Swagger instead, and uh, Thunder Wave is also a much safer option if I was running a Mega Sableye, it couldn't be bounced back from Magic Bounce, so I guess that's why I went for the Thunder Wave, we're now going to see the uh, Taunt come in on, actually onto my Aegislash slot, so why would you Taunt an Aegislash? Well, it's actually really good against Aegislash, because once they go into that offensive stance, they actually can't use King Shield, they're going to have to either hard switch out or just eat a regular attack, so very good play taunting my Aegislash as we see Heatran also go for a substitute. So very dangerous stuff coming out for me this turn. Uh, we're going to go for a Shadow Ball, keeping that Heatran honest. So at least we're going to break the sub this turn. And since I did enough damage to break the sub, and I can assume that I have enough damage to potentially KO the Heatran with another Shadow Ball. So we're going to see Taunt come out from the Thunders. This is the second turn it's taunted in a row. Taunts my Sableye, activates my Mental Herb, so I'm going to get a free turn. But I'm paralyzed. I actually went for the quash onto the Heatran, so I could potentially quash it and one-shot it with a Shadow Ball. But we actually lived through this Heat Wave. Can you believe that? This is a full Special D Aegislash. It is super bulky, and uh, I'm actually going to proc my Weakness Policy and finish this Heatran off with a Shadow Ball. Like I said, though, I probably shouldn't have taken any damage. If I would have got the quash off, I would have been able to finish him off with a Shadow Ball while still being at full. So it's not the best situation, but taking Heatran off takes a huge burden off my shoulders. I can use Cresselia as much as I want, and I can use Sableye as much as I want now. So that is huge for me in this matchup. When people throw away their Heatrans like that, it's one of my favorite things in the world. So Sableye, it's taunted, it's paralyzed, it has to switch. I'm going to be switching in with my Cresselia here to wall some of this damage. As we see a Rock Slide come out, it's actually going to hit my Aegislash. Remember, I couldn't Wide Guard, I couldn't King Shield because I was taunted. So I decided just to stay in and eat it. It's not like Age of Slash. At this point in the game, would have been doing that much anyways. Like, it would have gone down to almost anything. So I decided to let Age of Slash go down. We actually also eat a Thunderbolt with Cresselia. So not the best turn, but I mean, we took out the Heatran, which means I can use whatever Pokemon I want. I decided to come in with my Kangaskhan here. Going to be Mega Evolving, gaining that Parental Bond ability. And uh, this isn't going to be one of those... Uh, Cresselia double parental bond board games that I've been playing recently. It's just going to go for the standard fake out off on the Thunderous slot. You may wonder why I'm targeting that instead of the Landorus. I'm assuming the Landorus is choiced, or I'm just not really assuming that I'm going to eat a superpower. Also, locking down the Thunderous, it's going to activate its Citrus Berry. He's also going to tick down a little bit more from the, uh, from the burn at the end of the turn. Also, my Cresselia is trying to go for a finish off play with Icy Wind. But I'm actually not going to get it. If I hit that Icy Wind, Thunders would have ticked out and Landers would have been slower than my Kang. And I probably just would have won the game within the next couple turns. But it didn't work out that way. I have to switch out. I don't want my Kang getting hacked. So I switch my Sableye in to eat the Thunder Wave. My opponent goes for another Rock Slide. Note that his Landers is still faster than my Cresselia. And this is actually a quite fast Cresselia. So that tells me 100% that he is Scarfed. So we go for the Icy Wind here. And we start ticking him down a bit. If I would have got the Icy Wind off last turn, I would have been in such a good spot. But I'm still playing the game correctly. Remember, since I switched my Sableye in, I have access to Fake Out again. So we're going to see Fake Out come out. We're going to target the Landorus slot, opting to try to not get uh, hacks by the um, 
by the rock slide, because that's flinched me a couple times this game. My opponent's going to go for a yellow thunder wave off Microcellia, but uh, it's not going to be enough to stay, save him from the icy wind, the icy wind big damage. So now that the Thunderous is gone, what's good about Thunderous being gone here is now my uh, Sable, I can actually just go for Will Wisps on everything, and there's nothing to taunt it, there's nothing to stop it. So unless my opponent can KO Stable, I, I automatically win the game because uh, Kangaskhan can't really hit it. Because, like we saw in, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before his game, Unless your king has crunch, it can hit those ghost types 100% of the time. So, we're going to see a Mega Evolve, and I go for a will o Landers because that is the Pokemon that has the highest percent chance to KO my Sableye. He goes for a return onto my Cresselia slot. Remember, I am a little bit over half. I actually get to activate my Citrus Berry here. This is the reason why I like Citrus Berry on Cresselia. It gives it such clutch, uh, like, in these moments right here. It's so, it's so good. I would have actually gotten one-shotted there, but I'm going to live, and... Of course, I'd get paralyzed, so <laughs> the Citrus Berry actually isn't going to be able to do that much, but it did give me a second chance if uh, if I actually had the option. So we're going to see his Kangas can go for a Protect Room. His Lanners is burned. He needs to KO my Sableye this turn. I tried to use Recover. It actually didn't work, so if he can KO me with Rock Slide, it's going to be really hard for me to come back in this game. So Rock Slide hits. Leaves me at 4 HP. Also, Cresselia gets a Moonlight off. That's pretty much going to be GG right there. I mean... On his stream, he was like, oh my gosh, you have Moonlight too, this guy's everything. And I tried skill swapping him like twice. Uh, I got paralyzed and flinched, so kind of unfortunate that uh, I didn't get those off because it would have been an even funner game, but it is going to let me pick up the win. Uh, nonetheless, I didn't even really have to use my Kangaskhan at all. I sent it out for one turn of fakeout, so very good game against fellow streamer. Like I said, I will leave the link to his content below. Thank you guys for coming to watch in this game. I'm feeling really confident with this team, especially against Chalk, the standard battle spot, whatever, right now. So let's hope that this thing, let's hope that this trend goes into next season. Now remember, the VGC coming up in about two weeks is going to be Arizona. I'm going to be going there. I might bring this team or I might bring something a little bit different. You guys will have to stay tuned into my channel and into my content to see if I switch it up. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.